So what I've done here is I've added a ton of extra fuel tanks on the outside and they're smaller fuel tanks. So these should run out before the first engines do or around the same time the first engines do for these or the fuel tanks do. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm just gonna make sure it is not super rocking back and forth by just adding a few of these like so. Eek, that did not do what I wanted it to do. That's fine, we'll do it this way instead. So we'll go from the top of the nose cone and put it like that. And that should attach all of them and it does perfectly, which is exactly what we wanted. And we're just gonna make sure that all of these engines fire at the same time. Yes, all of them are. So that is very, very good. The last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take all six of these uh, decouplers, which are for the outer engines here, and we're gonna put them in their own. Those so these outer engines should wear off first, then we should decouple all of these fuel tanks, then we go into our main asparagus system, which has already been burning, and then we start taking off mass that way. Then we get up to the mid part, mid section, we'll decouple, we'll lose the entire bottom bit, and then we move up to the top bits where we fire off those engines, which should help us get to the moon. We start breaking off bits there, and the final bit that we break off is in the center, and that is for our re-entry of Kerbin. So that is our current goal. The last thing we need to do is actually move this down because it's way too high off the ground. I'm thinking there, uh, a little lower. There. Eh, yeah, that's that's about right. Let me just move it up a little bit. Just be safe, a little bit more. Otherwise it can get stuck in the ground. I do like to have it just a little bit off the ground, but uh, other people like it other way. So I'm just gonna add a few of these like so. And that is not gonna work. Whoops, I totally just broke all that, but that is why I have not let go of it yet because we can fix that by doing that and by grabbing just one of these and just one of those. And then we're just gonna place it in the center because we don't want it actually in the spot that, uh, let me check what's going on here. Is it because this is in the way? I think so. So we don't want the actual attaching bit here to be anywhere near the struts because it can get caught on it. So that's why I've done it the way I have. And all of these will also fire off at the exact same time as our engine. So this should be entertaining. We are going to call it the Moon Lander MK11. There we go. And hopefully, this will actually work. We have everything we need. Let's go ahead and try launching. Okay, this thing looks like a beast and it looks quite stable. It's not rocking around super bad. Jebediah looks happy. We have everything set, so let us launch. Oh, that is a lot of thrust. That is what I was going for to get us just going as fast as we possibly can. Now, you'll probably notice that the outer fuel tanks are not running down as fast as what I wanted them to. So what's gonna happen is two of the middle ones will get rid of first, so they have stopped already. The outer fuel tanks have way too much fuel in them uh, to you know, warrant everything going down the way it is. So I'm actually gonna bring down the throttle just a little bit for it. 4,000 feet, okay, so here we go. Here's the break off. And we're gonna break those two off too. And now we're gonna throttle back up. And as you see, we've lost a lot of mass already, but we're already pretty close to our 10,000 meters. We're blasting through. Probably don't need full throttle. Uh, we'll go a little under that. And as you can now tell, we have plenty of fuel. It's kind of deceptive because once you get to that final fuel tank, you're like, wow, I have so much more fuel than I anticipated, which is why we have this top bit here. By the time we get into orbit, we should lose this, this bottom bit and we should just only be focusing on the top bit because landing on the moon and getting out of the moon's orbit is, is quite easy. You don't need a lot of thrust to be able to do that. So I'm not too concerned there. We're also gonna start our atmospheric turn and start going this direction and we are moving quite rapidly, which is exactly what we wanted to do. I'm going to go back up to full throttle, and we are going to really make sure that we get our speed where we need it as we drop those engines off and continue 
this direction. And you can see it wobbles a bit, so you got to be a little careful because this bottom engine is doing uh, a lot more work than it needs to be because there's a lot of mass up at the top here. Now I'm going to check on my map. And our apoapsis, we are not really gaining uh, altitude with it yet, so I'm going to move this back up a little bit. And what may have hurt us quite a bit was having all those tanks at the edge, so we may want to rethink our design there, remove those outer tanks, because we don't have a lot of, a lot of uh, I guess, weight to it. And maybe put boosters and use the boosters first, then get rid of the boosters, then fire off the main asparagus system. I think that might be the goal that we need to go with uh, in the future. In fact, we may want to try that anyways, because this thing is all sorts of screwy. It is not wanting to... So now we are losing altitude here and we are losing fuel. So let us go revert back to the assembly and we'll fix that. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to remove these and I'm going to remove these. And we are going to put some boosters on here. But we want uh, a bit extra booster power going on. So the thing I'm going to do is I'm not going to do radial decouplers like that. I'm going to do these kind so they're a little closer which should help, we'll see. And oop, and we'll do this one, like so. Oop, yeah, it's not wanting to connect, which probably means it's running into an issue. There we go, looks good. Oops, no, I wanted you in and down a bit. Okay, so what should happen is we should probably move these back this way, because that is not gonna work. There we go. Okay, so now let's go to here, and we're going to find the boosters. And that might be a little overkill. In fact, I'm pretty sure it is. So it's it's going to be awesome. All right, that's all off the ground. The last thing that I want to do here is to go back to structural, is to get all of these and just connect these in so they're not going to be wobbling all over the place can be quite an issue. Also, I just noticed that uh, I'm going to have to redo this because the boosters themselves aren't lined up, which will give you an even an uneven amount of thrust, which can put you into a death spin. All right, that looks a little better. So let's put these back on, if I can actually, thank you. Do that. And one up at the top. That should be more than enough there. And then we'll do two across the middle on these other sections, which will just, once again, help with stability. The last thing we want to do also is to kind of go on the inside of these, which is a little hard to do. So maybe like so, and then go in towards the middle fuel tank there, like that. We'll do one more other booster as well. And there we go. That should be ridiculous amounts of thrust. We should not need any more than that. And we actually added a lot more weight than we needed to by doing it. But I think it'll be hilarious. So that's why we're doing it. Cool. Those are all set up properly. Let's then move all of the boosters into one thing. Along with all of the struts for takeoff. And let us save and launch. Oh, this is gonna be crazy. Uh, I think things might break apart, but we shall see. Uh, there's really nothing that I can do to fix it if it breaks apart. Oh, it's going. It is definitely going. This actually may work a lot better because what this is gonna do is this is gonna get us high enough that we no longer need the boosters, and then we need to get rid of them, which I totally forgot to set up in this. So we're gonna do that real quick before we die terribly. Okay, that should be good. That should be all of the right ones. And it's kind of taken us a little to the left, which means the craft needs a little better balancing, but you know, whatever works. And remove. Fire off those engines. Oh man. So that got us nearly to 10,000 feet, and we haven't even had to get rid of one of our asparagus engines yet. So this is working way better. Way better. I'm loving this. Jebediah, he's cracking up. He's like, that was awesome. 
It's the coolest thing I think I've ever seen. I'm like, I hear you, Jebediah. Me and you, bro. We're bros. Bros for life. The problem with these engines that I'm using is they're terribly inefficient. So they use so much fuel. So we're going to bring down our throttle to about there. About three quarters. Still gaining speed, which is fine. But I just want to make sure my apoapsis is growing. It is, which is quite good. So let's actually set all this up properly. Bada bing, bada boom. Bring it back a little bit. And close. And go back to my map. Oh crap, I think I, oh crap. I totally, did I accidentally hit something? I don't think I did, I think we're good. I think. I hit something and it, it may have uh, broken things. Okay, plenty of fuel though. We are definitely getting to the moon in this episode. We just went into the high enough to be in the orbit thing, as it says right there. About to hit 40,000 meters. Meters, not feet. Meters. So I'm going to check my map. Our orbit is growing and our apoapsis is getting higher. So we can probably duck it in a bit more as far as altitude goes and also rotate our craft a little bit so it's more along the same line that I want it to be on. There we go. And I think this is a good time to talk about uh, the fact that a lot of you have suggested different mods, uh, mostly graphical stuff. And I'll, che I'll check those out when I get the chance. The problem is of compatibility with the other stuff that I use, like with MechJab. So I want to make sure all of it works. And in order to do that, I need to install it on a different machine first and do it that way, which I have access to. So that's it's not going to be too big of an issue, but it, it does take a lot of time. So it may be a couple weeks before I add more graphical mods. However, I, I do like what I'm using already. Like, look at that sky dome. It's just, it's just beautiful. Uh, I'm going to put this back to full, full throttle because I do want to really get into orbit a lot quicker because I am kind of wasting time here just getting my orbit set, which isn't a bad thing. It's just taking a lot longer than I want it to, and I'm being super impatient. It's also worth noting that you guys give me a lot of gameplay uh, tips, which is really nice. I like those because it, you know, it lets me really know know what I'm doing wrong and what I could be doing better, which isn't necessarily a bad thing. And that's eh, that's pretty good. Let's let's bank right towards that horizon. Just go nuts. We're also gonna have to decouple soon and launch the other engines. Boom. So these things are giving me way more thrust than I need, so let's go like a quarter down. And that is doing a pretty good job of growing. I just want to check how much thrust I'm actually going to need. Eh, not a lot. Okay, so I'm going to... Uh, I'm going to cut my engines and I'm going to speed up a little bit right to about there. I'm going to go right at the horizon and I'm just going to go nuts with the thrust. We're also going to go back and watch this. The problem is like if I'm in this screen I can I can kind of see the fuel up there but it's it doesn't give me a good idea of what all of the fuel tanks are at. It just gives me a total. Okay there's the brake on that. We're going to let that grow and that should be good. That's at 65. That's 86 so we're going to speed up. Uh, and we are going to get to our apoapsis. We're going to turn her to uh, prograde, and we're going to make sure this is above 70,000, and that should be enough for getting a good orbit around Kerbin. Okay, I've been speeding up time. Like, this, the time is sped up as much as it possibly can go, and this is how slow it's going. So that's because I, I'm a certain uh, uh, height above the planet. Oop, that is going a lot faster now that I've dropped all that extra weight. So... Let's us uh, kind of set this up properly. We're just going to grow our periapsis a bit. 75, that's good. And our apoapsis is set. Now, what we actually need to do is set this as our target. And we've done this before, so this is anything special. 
gonna add a maneuver, which is prograde. And we're going to retrograde a little bit there. Trying to get kind of a, a good intercept with the moon itself. And that right there is not too bad and it doesn't require a whole lot of thrust. So what we're gonna do is we are going to now set this properly, which is about right there. And it says it's probably gonna take us about 48 seconds to burn. So we're gonna leave us about a minute gap just in case, right? You don't wanna, you don't really wanna screw it up. So we could actually probably retrograde a little bit, which will get us uh, kind of like that. I don't know. I think that would be better. So we're going to go with that. And we're just going to wait our two minutes, which we're just going to be up time for. Okay, we're almost there. Maybe a little faster. And there we go. So we're just going to slowly increase our throttle, which you could tell gives us quite a bit of thrust, even with the little throttle. We're going to remove two of our engines, which is so I didn't burn them up all the way. So I can do that while readjusting and then doing a full burn. Which gives us about a little under what we actually need. So we should, at this rate, get to the moon pretty rapidly without really burning out too much of our fuel. Which gives us plenty of fuel to get back. So we should have plenty of fuel for this trip. If we don't, poor Jebediah, he's, we're going to need to solve a rescue mission. Because our, our idea here with the series is if we get a Kerbal lost, we need to rescue him. Especially if it's one of our original three, which is uh, Jebediah and Bob or Bill or whatever they are. And we can probably bring our throttle down a little bit. Just so our node ETA is kind of catching up with us. And you know what? Let us cut. Uh, no, let's burn a little bit more. Just kind of get that like so. Perfect-ish. I mean, it's good enough. And that's, that gets us exactly where we need to go, which is into the moon's orbit. Because once we're there, we can create an orbit around the moon and then land ourselves on the moon without using too much fuel, which is really quite something special. However, we won't do that this week because we only needed to make two episodes this week because of all the Star Wars Patch 2.6 content coming out that I have to cover. So instead, we'll be doing it next week, which is landing on the moon. However, our mission is going quite well. Let me know what you think of that little setup that I had to get off the, the surface. It's probably inefficient in some way or another, but you know what? It worked for me and... Uh, it's going to get us to the moon and back, which is even better. But with that being said, we shall see you guys next time.